I don't count yet 62. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, for coming to the second session of the TIS working group in this ITF uh, 118. So, first of all, the ITF not well, but uh, I hope that most of you have been in the first session. But for those of you that may only come to the session, that you are going to Participate if you participate here, you do it under the ITF process and policies, and uh, uh, you have all the ITF not well here. So, uh, just as a um, as a reminder, we have the the second session of today. We will start also with uh, some transport slides, um, uh, some transport, no, some ITF slides or RFS, whatever slides term we use and uh, then we will uh, move on for uh, some additional documents covering the MPLA topology and uh, the document coming from from CCAMP and some segment routing policy extensions for the network source partition so we can start now okay so just remember also to to join and to so maybe also ITF sees that in the second session we have less people than in the first session. And we expect to do at least one poll. <laughs> so log in because if you want to raise your hand or say yes or no. Okay, so Luis, thank you. So, so this is Luis from Telefonica. I will present uh, um, this uh, this slides on behalf of my co-author. So. Even though we are referring to the to the draft, basically the, the discussion uh, today will be about the, the concept of ca custom customer topology intent. So the motivation is uh, uh, for a customer to, to express in topological intents could be twofold. The, the one case could be for building a, a logical view of the desired slice service or how these services should be instantiated, should be realized. So it has a clear impact on realization and uh, basically it will provide hints to the network slice controller on how to instantiate the service, how to realize that. The second case would be to uh, operate the slice service according to the express topology. So we found ideas of controlling the slice. This is something that is, is mentioned in the framework document, but this is not the purpose of, of the, the draft. So the, the draft is not going in the direction of the control of the slice, but just simply providing hints on how to realize the slide. The slice. Next, please. So what we are trying to, to, to cover are similar requirements as the ones from ACTN type uh, B, uh, virtual network type two. So essentially the, the idea of using customized topologies so that we can provide more knowledge to the network less controller on how to implement that. So ACTN virtual network was considered uh, equivalent to the concept of network slicing, but the working group decided to go through the concept of network slice. So essentially what we are doing is bringing here the same requirements that were considered in, in the case of ACTN. ACTN considers type one virtual network, which is a connectivity-based virtual, virtual network. So it would be equivalent to the network slice with connectivity constructs as, as uh, detailed in, in the framework and in the MBIM model. And also ACTN considers the type two uh, virtual network, which is a topology-based virtual network. This is the, the case that we are um, we are trying to, to, to discuss with this draft. Um, and essentially, well, the, the difference here or what would be the incremental point with regards to ACTN type two is that the, the T topology model 
used for defined custom, customized topologies does not include the SLOs or SLAs definitions. So somehow we are um, providing a, a delta on top of that uh, in this case. So next, please. There were, in, in previous discussion of, of this topic in, in previous IPF meetings, there were feedback uh, that we received and, and we, are trying, we are targeting to, to clarify the points uh, here today. So um, there was a, a clear comment about the use cases that were not convincing at all about the need of, of this customized or customer topology intent. So we will present to the uh, an additional case that we expect to be uh, much more clear than the ones in the past for justifying the, this, this need. And there also there, there were also a number of concerns um, that are detailed here in different values I will cover later on one by one. So I, I will read later on. So next, please. Regarding the concerns, so the, the first concern was about if uh, whether building a customized topology required prior topology information from the provider. So this is not mandatory at all. So th there could be different ways of, of proceeding if, if there is an offline negotiation between customer and provider, or if the the, the provider on the fly uh, get the, the the customer topology intent and process it according to to some logic. Um, the online negotiation or online negotiation uh, could be there. We uh, do not enter in those details, but we, we give for granted that there will be the possibility of um, uh, expressing this uh, customer topology. Uh, the second concern was about uh, how the network less controller may map a customized topology to an internal realization, to an NRP. So here we, we provide some kind of mapping between the, the concepts. So the edge node could be equivalent to the PE node attached to a SAP. The HTP uh, be equivalent to an SDP. The transit node that would be a, a P node equivalent to a virtual node that can be translated to resource sharing constraints. So somehow grouping uh, resources or uh, that, uh, let's say considering some constraints to a number of, of resources so we can somehow play with the fact of aggregating or, or um, with more or less detail, and also the, the equivalence between link and reserve resources. The third concern was about uh, whether the constraints expressed by a customized topology can be instead expressed by, a, by the connectivity constructs. So we will see later on in the use case that some scenarios uh, for um, that in some, in some scenarios is more efficient to the usage of topologies because provide some hints for that, that realization uh, in terms of diversity of the of how to realize the, um, the the different parts of the slice, the resource setting or uh, SLOs and, and so on so far. And the last uh, concern was about uh, whether existing models are sufficient to express a customized topology. So the base model exists, that is uh, represented by the RFC 8345, uh, but no suitable model exists for uh, expressing topology plus SLO, SLAs in terms of the, in the same terms that uh, uh, network slicing does. Next, please. So yeah, just recapping um, uh, as a, let's say, base for the discussion later on in the use case. So just a, a reminder. So by, uh, in, in the original idea of the network slice controller, we represent the network slice as a, could be a, a set of, of connectivity constructs. So we can have different connectivity constructs with different uh, ways of connecting, any to any, point to point, point to multipoint, and, and connecting different SDPs and supporting different SLOs, SLAs, uh, different identifiers, and so on and so far. So taking this as a, as a departing point for, the, for explaining the case, next please. So let's consider the, the following example. So um, a customer could require to implement an network slice that uh, considers two con kind of connectivity constructs, the blue one and the orange one, okay? If we proceed uh, in this way without the uh, customer topology information being uh, passed to the network slice controller, could be the case that the network slice controller uh, realize the, the slice, as you can see on your uh, on your left, right? So the green way, the green way, the green case. Sorry. So putting everything together on the same uh, set of resources, the same NRP. As a toy example, let's consider that this is a layer three VPN. So we do not provide any hint on how to realize that. Could be the case that the network less controllers simply map all the connectivity constructs on top of the same BRF. So assuming that the SLOs, SLAs, and so are, 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 the, are let's say suitable for both the blue and the orange one. So the, the point here is that adding or modifying any part of the slice would imply 
uh, modification to this green uh, BRF, so potentially affecting or impacting nodes that not necessarily need to be impacted because are part of the, another slice. So uh, considering what you can see on, on your right, uh, in the case of passing information about the customer topology, then we are providing hints to the network slice controller to separate the, the different connectivity constructs. Again, with this toy example, uh, basically this uh, would imply that the blue uh, uh, connectivity constructs are uh, deployed on top of a BRF, the uh, BRF blue, and the orange on top of the orange BRF. In this case, if we need to add new nodes, for instance, in the blue uh, slice, in the blue connectivity construct, we do not impact on the orange connectivity construct. So somehow we have this separation of, um, of, re of resources, let's say, so not, not impacting at all in the realization. Um, next, please. So the next steps for, for this work, we for sure need to address pending, uh, pending, pending comments, comments from Ed, from uh, other participants in the working group. And, and also, we, for sure, we are open to new comments on, on, on questions. Our idea would be once we refine the draft, because we need to, to refine the draft and, and overview the draft and be, be making it consistent, what we mentioned before about the, the idea of focusing on the, on the hints for the realization and so So we need to go through the draft again. Our idea would be to request the, the working group adoption. And just to remind that the, the GitHub uh, repo link for those interested in going through the, through the draft. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Any questions for Luis? Uh, I have a question that I've asked before as well. Um, I don't think I got a satisfying answer. So I'm going to repeat it again. So if you have this model, the topology model with all the SLOs, SLEs, specified in it, uh, you can, is it possible for somebody to use this model as a service request to make a service request? I, I think that uh, this would accompany the, the other model, the MIA model. I mean, this is not a standalone model. So it would be a complement of the other one. This, this is my I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the motivation. I mean, we want something that works in conjunction with the slice service model. Yeah. And uh, the expectation, at least my expectation, is that we will be able to reuse the existing topology models to do that. Uh, but you are just if you are making a justification that you need this model because it includes SLOs, SLEs, yes. which are also available in the slice service model. I uh, yeah, I'm trying to understand why. Uh, I mean, why somebody may not be able to just use this model to request a service? So it's because you're, if you're going to specify a, the SLOs, SLEs at a very granular level, uh, this can pretty much be a, asking a customized topology request may be treated as a slice service request. Yeah, I see. I, I guess probably uh, I, I was it's yeah. more. Well, uh, it was generous enough to put me on the front. So basically, we have a we, we we define this topology and on which you could you know either build a network slice connection at the same time or afterwards you could do this on demand or you could do this along with building the customized topology. That's so so basically what that's what Louis said is complementary. You could build uh, the topology first, make the resource reserved, and then you could build build it, uh, the network slice connection on demand according to um, the customer's uh, requirement. I agree, but that wasn't my question, right? So my question is, do you need the, I mean, would you need the slice service model if you just have this? Can somebody, I mean, you, you said you, that's not the intent, but it seems like you, you put everything in here that can just be used to request a service. I think the problem is the term service is a little bit blurred. If, if you think about, marketing term like topology is a service. <laughs> With this model, you can set up a topology service, but the topology service is basically reserving resources in the network, it's not providing connectivity. Then you need a network slice service model to request the connectivity on top of that topology service. So I hope this clarify a bit more. <laughs> yeah, let's discuss that offline. Okay. My question, uh, my comments is that it seems that, uh, can you go back to us? 
a slide before that, it seems that on the right, you said resource isolation and resource reservations. It seems like quite relevant with networks resource partition. So, I mean, are you saying that like using an RP as a service or something different? So, yeah. I'm not, not sure if I get the question. So, um, with this, we simply illustrate, let's say, the, the way of um, how to realize the service could be uh, uh, using the same uh, NRP, but uh, different uh, reservations, as I said, or different VRFs, maybe on top of the NRP, the same NRP, so not necessarily two different NRPs, depending on, on uh, what is the, the, the actual concept of NRP that we use. No? Because for me, it's like the two different resources. Could be, for instance, two different VRFs, yeah. But yes. on, on, on top it, of the same. So in that way, why don't you use an IP other than uh, something new here? But we, think we, we don't have way of expressing this with an IP, I guess. But if you think that's a requirement, maybe like you can use a template to like augmenting the NRP model. So in that way, I, I think also can Okay, maybe we can look at that, but I'm, I'm not sure if we can make it because in that way. you are only specifying the resource. But for slide service as well as e, there are so many different use cases there. We need definitely to look at this. Uh, I don't have a because, an answer right now. Yes, maybe we need to go through NLP model and, and check. I would like also like people to invite to read RSC 8453 because. We had this discussion many, many years ago in the context of ACTMVN, and we have long, and we have all these issues are being clarified. The big issue is that we are now having a different model, which is addressing similar scenarios, and we are we have a gap, uh, which is uh, uh, which this draft is going to address in order to uh, to support all the the scenarios that can be addressed with network licensing service model. In some cases, there is a gap of the topology, and this is exactly what this draft is addressing. But when I'm hearing a lot of comments like realization or what happens, or the fact that you first have to decide about topology and then say this was the same discussion five to seven years ago, is exactly the same the issue. So maybe we can look at the rest city for 53 to find uh, uh, the right answer. Thank you. Uh, hi, Luis. I have one, uh, well, a couple of questions. The first one is about the intention of the model. You, you said at the very beginning that the uh, that what you wanted to express is the intention of the topology. So it was like, hey, say that the, 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 when you request the slides, also you want it. Are you also, or is it uh, is it envisioned also to to use it further to say which is the the real or, or what you get in the same language that you are asking, you mm -hmm. you may ask for something, you may, you might get another different thing. Mm -hmm. uh, is it also intended to use the same model for the other? And also, if it's intended to uh, keep uh, update or to, to be updated, you know, say not only for the first time, they say, hey, this is what I want, but also to keep, uh, you get, okay, this is what you get, and then you keep modifying and say, hey, now, uh, please don't use this or, or upgrade and so on. Okay, so for, the, the, for the first question, which is uh, if the provider would use this model for, uh, for exposing to the customer, we are not intending that. So we are focusing on the, from the customer to the provider. Okay. So we are, uh, the, the other part is out of the scope. Okay. Um, and the second question about modification also. So yeah, we do foresee that there could be potential modifications as commented before. So maybe we can add another new node in the blue uh, uh, slides, let's say, and um, co in communicating in that way. So saying, position <laughs> this in the blue slides and not in the orange slides. Yeah, uh, this is true. Uh, just to answer, answer to Bo's question, I don't think so we should, this is not an RPS service. So I think we should be very, very clear. And if there is a confusion, and if there is a text needed, let's add it very early, why it is not. And this is, as you, you have just answered, it's not, the, it's a view at the top so it yes. has nothing to do with what's happening how we are realizing it's top so just a clarification i hope and i completely agree with italo as well we have had this i was part of those debates 
so <laughs> it's ready to move on let's go thank you so i think it's clear we need more discussion before we consider adoption thank uh, you. please continue discussing on list take the comments respond to them look forward to it thank you Vitalo? Thank you. I'm Itasti Dito Busi, presenting on behalf of co authors and contributors uh, a profile of the T topology model for non T applications. Next slide. Okay, this draft has some history. We presented the first uh, version in ITF 110. We get some positive feedbacks from the list, uh, and uh, we represented an update uh, based on the comments we received in ITF 111. Again, other uh, good positive feedbacks from the list. Uh, the idea was to continue discussion uh, on the, uh, from the meeting, sorry, but uh, the idea was to continue discussion on the mini list. There were no follow up. Uh, we recently pulled the working group for interest uh, and we got uh, a few positive feedbacks from Julien on moving forward. But uh, we, so we decided to present uh, the document here to get uh, more feedbacks. Next slide. So what was the motivation at the beginning? Uh, and the red one is the new motivation. That is why we are back here, OK? We found uh, from, for a long time that there are multiple discussions in different ITF working groups uh, uh, for where we have uh, a non-T network. But uh, um, the solution can be addressed by taking a subset of the attributes, which are already defined by the T topology model. And recently, I found uh, similar discussions happening in the Obsidian Working Group in the context of digital map. There are some gaps identified on NSC 45, which are already addressed by the 8795. The problem that everybody says when I raise my comment is, oh, but uh, it's an elephant. It's a very big document. It's a very big young model. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> on the other side, uh, uh, the, the, the most of these attributes are optional and the, 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 it was a conscious decision at that time uh, to make everything optional because uh, it de depending on the different application you may pick up uh, a different subset of the attributes uh, doing it in a modular way would have end up to something like uh, a model per, a module per attribute <laughs> which is not very good okay and uh, we noticed that some of these features that are covered by the t topology are 14 networks, clearly, but some of them are also applicable to scenarios which are t with T or non-T. So the fact that it's called T topology doesn't mean that uh, it must be must not be used when it is in a non-T network. And most of these features, as I said, are optional, so we can... Uh, <clears throat> so what is the scope of the draft is informational, is to make it clear that you can pro take a subset of this topology model and address some of the use cases, uh, which are non-T use cases. Uh, yeah, like, these are the example. These are, they have not been changed, but I got some discussion. Maybe we can add the new use cases in the future uh, on what you can do with a subset. Uh, and if we can look at the, at the model, these five uh, uh, subsets are very minimal, very minimal uh, elements. Next one. Uh, what is important uh, is how do you augment, okay? If you want to use a T, if, if for your application you need a subset of the T topology profile, you still have two options on how you do create your technology-specific augmentation. This was discussed extensively, for example, in SICAM working group for the microwave. If you, rely, if you need the T topology profile to implement your technology-specific augmentation, basically what you can do, you can augment directly the T topology model and what, for example, the microwave people did, they added an appendix showing what is the subset of the T topology model that is needed for the microwave case. Another option could be that if you don't really need, but you may need in the, in the instance and not in the model, the T topology, what you can do, you can augment the network topology. And then when you instantiate the model, you can instantiate both the technology specific network topology and the T topology and use the famous multi inheritance to be independent. So you can have also use case where you don't use, if you don't use the, the topology attributes, you don't, you don't instantiate it. Next slide. Okay, we got some open issues uh, during the discussion. The first big open issue is uh, that was why the, the document didn't progress so fast in the, in the past is that, uh, okay, if you have a topology profile, how can the client know what is the topology profile uh, which is implemented by the server? And the problem is, uh, we, uh, we raise a comment on that mode, but uh, the deviation is not good. The deviation applies to the schema. 
But here the problem is that a leaf may be implemented or not implemented on a different instances. So the profile is per instance or per network types. So it's a little bit more granular than just the whole schema. So the proposal uh, after what is going on, maybe the best idea is to keep this draft informational, just describe that we can do the profile and maybe give some example. And maybe we can trigger discussion in the net mode or Obsidia working group uh, to see how we can solve this problem, maybe in a more generic solution, like how it is possible when you have a big young model to implement a profile and manage this uh, uh, in, a, in a machine readable way. Next one. The second open issue is that we got a comment from Scott during ITF 111 is about how, what is the difference between supporting node supporting links in RSC 345 and our lay underlay in 7095. And based on our discussion, we think that the overlay underlay is mainly for the multi-layer relationship. So when you want to show that the path in the underlay network, like a T tunnel is supporting a link in the overlay network, then we think this is the, the construct to represent it. If the support you know, the supporting link of 8345 is mainly for the abstraction. If I want to say this abstract node, in the, is, this node is representing, is supported by these uh, underlying um, physical nodes, uh, that's the use of this uh, association. But again, this is a proposal to be discussed and getting some agreement. I think it's good to provide this guideline. Okay, so what is the next step? We think we suggest to keep this is, as an informational document is good to if you can get uh, working group adoption to show that this is not the opinion of the individual who have worked on RSC 7095, but is the working group opinion. And then we maybe advertise this uh, to other working group drafts to make it, uh, to make, for example, this may be relevant for the digital mapping of serial working group. I keep raising the comment, but if if you have a working group status, give a little bit uh, clarification that is not my opinion. <laughs> and then we can we can also ask the people in Netmod and Obsidian to, to maybe help us uh, uh, to profiling uh, Sana Yam model. And of course, uh, as usual, more review and comments are welcome. And uh, if you think there are other useful examples on how we can profile the T topology, uh, we, uh, we are very welcome to add that to the draft. And we are tracking the discussion during the on the GitHub uh, together with other T topology, T, 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 T related models uh, in GitHub. Thank you. Comments? So I have uh, just a minor comment. Uh, the geolocation, there's now a standalone RFC for that. So I'd say drop it from this draft. Okay. It's okay. It's just, there's, it's been solved elsewhere. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe there, uh, as we did in some other augmentation track, is just point or make the leaf ref to the to the draft that has the standalone. And, uh, yeah, so uh, well, T topology got there first yes. with geolocation, and then this other draft came along as an independent that, that's to be used in for future. Okay. So we don't have to use t you don't have to use the older one for the future. We should use the new generic one for okay, the future. Okay. Okay. So awesome. so basically, we, we if you want to provide a network topology with geolocation information for the loaded links, uh, we need to augment the RSC three forty five using it, that RSC it, instead of uh, profiling the topology. And maybe we. That's we right. think it, But if you're using the, t topology, there's nothing wrong with using yeah. the the definition. It's just. I you know, see your point. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. So it's just from a profile standpoint, it doesn't make a lot. Of okay. Sense. I see your point. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of polls, a couple of questions. The first question is interested in the topic, and then the second one will be uh, whether this draft is a good starting point or not. So let's see if we get it uh, typed in. <laughs>
you know, I'd say we, it looks like we have some reasonable interest. I wouldn't call it overwhelming interest, but we have some reasonable interest. So is this a good starting point? You'll note we're not asking if you've read it. So <laughs> I, 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 no, I assume the, the nose means that you have read it and you have objections to the document. So I oh, guess that gosh. it needs to be that enhancements need to be done in the document before being adopted. I guess. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. We have a few objections. If anyone wants to jump in queue or jump to the mic uh, uh, to say why, that would be great. If not, you know, you'll always have an opportunity on the list. So I, I think the uh, about the same number think this is a, as who thought we should be working on it. Think this is a good starting point. So we we could talk among the chairs on where to go next. Uh, you know, we, it is Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say we have overwhelming participation, but you know, maybe it's good enough to move forward. With. In the meanwhile, right. we, maybe we can drop the, com, the, the the use cases you mentioned. Yeah, that's that, that could that's be, easy. Act, to act, frankly, that could be done as part of an adoption call. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. The other thing is check the number of authors. We're trying to get the number of authors okay. down as part of adoption. Okay. And also, we can uh, look also for other use cases. Maybe that one can be replay, can be dropped. But new ones can come in. Okay, thank you. Okay, so providing empirical I think, Atalo, you're, you're still you, you, here. You, you need to come back, but I mean, you can sit down and stand up again. <laughs> it's a little, a little bit of exercise. Okay, enough, I but. forgot the agenda. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm presenting now the um, young model for empirical topology uh, for on behalf of co-authors and the contributors. Next slide. Okay. Again, this slide, this document has some history. We presented initial proposal in ITF 104. It was mainly for MPLSTP topology and tunnel, but we got the feedback that ATP is a profile of T. And therefore, we have been uh, asked to, to basically move uh, the, to identify the gaps in the MPLST young models that will, will be needed to manage MPLSTP networks. Uh, because of that, we started to work on this uh, together with the other experts in the T-Tunnel model during the, um, the weekly course. And the agreement, there was another problem about where to progress this work. Uh, and the discussion at that time was to progress this work here together with the T MPLS T-Tunnel model, but to keep the MPLS working group informed. We had this discussion with the T experts uh, on, the week, on the weekly call, and we had we agreed that we need to update the MPLST tunnel model, as well as to create this draft for the topology <coughs> model. And uh, uh, then we have shared this outcome on the main list of both MPLS and T's working groups. Next slide. Then the approach that uh, we are following is there is a to augment uh, the T packet uh, topology model, which is by itself augmented the T topology. So what we add here is only the MPLS uh, uh, T and TP Aspect, specific aspects. Next. And what we changed recently, we got some comments and we respin in the draft. So we have aligned uh, the draft, the model with the uh, RCT 776 mix to, 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 to be aligned with the latest version. We updated the contribution and authors list to comply with the RFC 7322. And we had, uh, after the 05, we had a lot of discussion on the list that, on the abstract, uh, and we tried to we have, we have tried to improve the abstract based on the feedbacks. I hope uh, the, the abstract is much better now. And we had some comments from Adrian on the editorial comments we have addressed, and we had added also the security and Diana consideration based on the input from Adrian. Next. Okay, the, we track the work uh, on this document in GitHub, the, the same GitHub as before for the where we, all the T work is on, ongoing. We have uh, three open issues pending uh, that can be addressed by the working group process. The first one is uh, while, while discussing the abstract, uh, I got some offline comment that, uh, well, the way it was written, it was not very clear that MPLST is a subset of MPLS. Uh, maybe the abstract is now better, uh, but. Uh, I said, okay, let's let's double check. I might suggest that people read and let me know if there is something ambiguous or unclear 
we will do, we will change. Otherwise, we can close the issue quickly. And uh, we have some doubt in the past about whether we need to support MPL, multi-domain MPLS tunnels. The draft is assuming no, because we don't have to have um, the, the inter-domain uh, capability reporting. But uh, again, input are welcome on this. The last one is a minor, uh, uh, young, just to track uh, that we need to add uh, the MPLS label in the record route. And that has be done in both in the tunnel and topology. So it's, it's more a work to do rather than an issue to discuss. Of course, we welcome any comments, and we think the document is now ready for adoption. Thank you. Comments? We'll do the same polls. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, about a quarter of the people uh, participating uh, who are in the meeting, and but all are supportive. So we'll move to the second part. I think people are scared away that you're going to ask them to come to the mic if they say no. <laughs> we are almost as only one, only one. Hand. Yeah, basically one. the same numbers. Uh, everyone who said who said um, basically everyone who said yes uh, to the first are saying yes to the second. It's pretty much the same. Okay. So uh, I think we're in the same Thank boat you. as the last one. Okay. Maybe a little stronger. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And Scott, you're going to be up next. Welcome, Scott Mansfield Erickson, here to talk about something that has been talked about before, but this is the first time that we've presented this in T's. If you notice the name of this draft, it says C-Camp. So the, the short story, to go to the next slide, please. The next, uh, the, the uh, short story here is that we had a draft in C-Camp that was for microwave topology. And in that draft, we had three separate modules and Two of the modules were not directly related to microwave. They were more generic in, uh, in their scope. So in order to move the topology draft faster, we took that generic work out and have created these two other modules. This was bandwidth availability is the one I'm presenting here in um, T's. And there was interface reference that I presented in ops area, I don't know, it was on, uh, six months ago, as far as I can tell. But anyway, the, uh, it's been a long week. So the, um, the idea here is that there is a need in microwave topology to be able to, when you read the microwave topology, that you can understand the bandwidth availability information about the microwave equipment, and, but that bandwidth availability can be a more generic concept and it could be supported for other technologies too. So the idea here is to uh, advance the discussion around what bandwidth availability means, how it's applicable to the different types of technologies, how it can be tied to the topologies in a uh, not holding up our microwave draft. So. That's the, that's the idea here. So we were thinking that T, since this is bandwidth and T's is kind of a uh, traffic engineering kind of thing, we were uh, wanting to know if the chairs were interested in discussing moving this over to T's, if they had a better idea of where it should go. Um, the GitHub's there with the um, issues list and the draft that we have 
which was pulled out of the um, microwave draft, I created a separate uh, draft that has just this Yang module in it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. I don't know. Is there another slide? It might be, it's the, oh, what do we do? Thanks. Okay, no more. No more slides. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I have some, uh, uh, some questions also to, to help, I guess, the, the ground and understand the, the, the motivation and why should this uh, uh -huh. pick this. So the very first one is you are, uh, this aims at providing information from the network, so you are not, you are not uh, using it to, uh, let's say, enforce anything. It's more being information right. of, of what happens, right? Well, it's the, uh, it's, Part of topology, you go out and say, what is my topology? It comes in and this is the information. This is information associated you get, so. It. It's associated, it's a information about the node that is uh, from, yeah. from the network. So in, in, in a micro, you are subject to conditions of weather conditions, right. something yeah. that happens, so the bandwidth can, can throw yeah, it. Yeah, there's max so, and okay. energy, right? so, exactly. so it's interesting for traffic engineering because you can take decisions based on that knowledge that mm -hmm. things are, are floating. Yes. Okay, so here, I, I don't know yet any other, or maybe there are more other technologies that are also suffering the same, or are subject to suffer the same issue, maybe also some, uh, uh, maybe some, also uh -huh. some radio technologies, maybe not microwave, but also you have any, sure. any technologies that are, that can suffer from, from that. Thank you. So, Luis, you have some questions? Yeah, Luis from Telefonica. I think that this is interesting, but the setup is very, logically, is very focused now in, in microwave, as you were saying, with particularities. Mm -hmm. the job, it, you are talking about tables, depending on the availability of the link and so on. So, clearly, probably we, we, it would be required to go through, I mean, to get the idea and, and somehow restart working on what could be the, the, the aspects that could be generalized. Microwave is clearly a, a corner case, let's say. It's valid for sure, but it's probably not, not the main topic. And also probably to, to understand other things like at which level, I mean, of the protocol stack, we are uh, reporting the, the bandwidth availability because microwave is, is layer one, let's say. So mm -hmm. if, if we are covering two or three uh, and, and things like uh, how often will we refresh the, the, the information, how will we get the information and so on so far. So I, I think it's interesting, but probably we need to, to look at the problem from scratch, let's say. To make it more generic, there yes. is work that needs to be done. Yes, I agree. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I put this in chat. Um, I've heard uh, in Ivy this week about ba uh, bandwidth availability. Well, we put the other one in Ivy, so let's that, just take everything to Ivy. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, so I heard about that in Ivy. Um, certainly, the Mane working group cares mm -hmm. about transmission-related parameters, True. but they haven't okay. gotten on to Yang yet. Ah, um, we could introduce them to some fun. Yeah, that's right. You can introduce it. it. It certainly seems like it would be appropriate if they were doing Yang to bring it there, but they're not. Um, I think... TVR might be interested, but they're not there yet. They have their own link parameters right, right now. Right. And we just we discussed that. And then the last one is raw as part of DetNet mm -hmm. should be worried about, you know, radio related parameters since that's what the, mm. that topic is all about. So I think there's a lot of choices there. Um, it might take a little discussion among chairs, among contributors, and to think about where, where this belongs but there's no shortage of places. <laughs> there's no shortage of places. And you've given me the direction that I need to, uh, to satisfy the people that were working on this and to provide them with the information that there are several places that, that we could take. And so I will be suggesting and encouraging people that want this work to move forward to flood mailing lists with their ideas. <laughs> yeah, and, and thinking about it, I don't know if with, with which chair hat on or no chair hat, Mm -hmm. It would be nice if there was a single place where radio related parameters were being modeled in Yang. Um, yeah, it's called 3GPP. Not... What's that? It's called 3GPP. Yeah, well, um, there are radios beyond uh, 3GPP. <laughs> well, uh, it so... depends. Okay, you mean any generic radio? That's what I mean. Ah, yes, because okay. you know, we operate right. a layer above the ah, radio, yes, yes, so we should yes. be, have that generic solution. Okay. Um, and you know, I think we, we should Sorry, figure I out where that is, but I don't have an answer for where that is yet. Yeah, yeah that's fine. But definitely, I, I think 
and I personally think that uh, at least as contributor or individual that uh, bandwidth availability uh, now we are as you say we are seeing at the ethernet layer you see the interface the interface sometimes does not change you, you see the, always the same uh, 100 megabit interface but the reality is that you are not having 100 megabit if you try if you, if you squeeze the if you squeeze the radio channel does not happen we have use cases in a, in our operation that we have also links getting, getting, for example, in Brazil, going through the Amazon River on top with a, with a radio, radio link. There. And mm -hmm. you, you might think that in, a, in the backbone, you sometimes have more or less problems. And now we are solving this, those problems, for example, with MPLSTP. So that is, we are solving them with traffic engineering technologies. So having the real or this bandwidth information or this real bandwidth availability data down, I think for traffic engineering purposes, it's, it's interesting, and I think it, it makes you, this is why it is part of the work, that the information itself can become from other working groups. I mean, it's true that that, that, can, that can belong, that, but that for us, for traffic engineering, uh, you, are, you can take decisions based on, on this uh, um, bandwidth availability, bandwidth unavail for availability or unavailability sometimes. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. I think it's a very interesting parameter it's mm -hmm. this question of where do, we, where do we do the work yeah not that right. if, if we should do the work at least for my that's me as a right. contributor this provides me with the information i need to take it back to the people that are interested in this as well and we will be progressing this on various mailing lists to see if yeah. we can get, reach some consensus Perfect. yeah we, we um, we'll bring in some area we, directors we while any, we're at it too uh, ESG <laughs> participation at the moment so we can do, say anything we want but <laughs> more importantly uh, Rob was covering and Rob from the ops area is actually a good person to ask because this bridges multiple areas so we definitely should have a discussion with uh, right. our well with multiple ads on this correct well I appreciate that I appreciate the time thank you Great very much topic. thank you, thank you. Uh, last up, last but not least. So in our piece again. Yes. So you have something like uh, forty-two minutes if you choose to. Use. Uh, <laughs> I can say maybe <laughs> thirty minutes for people. Okay, so this is Jadon again. I'm going to give a presentation on this BGP SR policy extensions for the NRP. Uh, this document has been discussed and uh, adoption called in the IDR working group. Here is just to give you this information and collect some feedback on the scalability. Okay, uh, some background about this work. Uh, we know NRP, the concept of NRP, and uh, for SI policy, uh, it is a set of candidate paths, each consisting of uh, one or more segment lists and uh, associated information. So the package steer can be steered to an asset policy and be augmented in the package header with a segment list. And an asset policy may be associated with a particular NRP in the network. And this association between the asset policy and NRP need to be specified in the protocol. So that package steer to this asset policy can be augmented with both the segment list and an RP ID in the package header. So this document defines the extension to BGP as a policy to associate an RP with, uh, to indicate an RP with, uh, with, with which the as a policy is associated with. Okay. Here is a update uh, uh, extension to the BGP as a policy address family. Uh, basically, we define a new sub TLV called an RP sub TLV in the BGP tunnel encapsulation attribute. It can be carried in the BGP tunnel encapsulation attribute when the title type is set to SR policy. Uh, the format is shown here, and we have assigned, uh, requested I not to assign the type code. Um, the NRP ID is for octet lines, which is uh, consistent with other protocols. Okay, next slide. Here is the updated BGP SR policy encoding. As shown here, this NRP sub TLV is carried at the candidate pass level, which means that all the segment lists uh, of this candidate pass will be associated with the same NRP. Okay, next slide. Here are the procedures uh, uh, update when the NRP, NRP SR policy is associated with the uh, NRP. The so originating node of the SR policy should include this NRP sub-TLV in the PGP tunnel encapsulation attribute 
when it is used to advertise as a policy to the uh, head and node. And the setting of other fields are kept unchanged. And when the SR policy ingress node received the uh, SR policy candidate pass, which is acceptable and usable, it will encapsulate an RP ID in the head of a package, which are steered to the SR policy. Okay, then, and the encapsulation for SRV6 policy is defined to carry this an RP ID is defined in this uh, six man draft. Okay, next slide. Uh, here are some operational considerations. Uh, basically with the proposed mechanism, it allows to have different uh, candidate paths in one SR policy to be associated with uh, different NRPs. Well, in normal scenarios, it is considered that the association between SR policy and NRP should be consistent. So that uh, in normal case, all this uncandidate paths of one SR policy should be associated with the same NRP, okay? Next slide. Oh, in the recent update, we add uh, a scalability considerations section uh, to give some analysis about the scalability uh, 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 about on this uh, as a BGP based as a policy. Uh, basically, this uh, mechanism uh, defines the draft as some additional information, the NRP information to the SR policy candidate pass. And as the number of NRP increases, this number of the SR policy can pass may also increase. And when BGP is used as a signaling protocol for the SR policy can pass, the amount of information to be exchanged between the controller and the head end node will also increase. Uh, however, since the SR policy can pass will only be uh, installed by the head end node of the SR policy. So this kind of impact is considered uh, acceptable comparing to the IGP-based uh, mechanisms. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, the next steps, uh, as I just mentioned, this document has been worked in IDR and finished the working group adoption call there. We're waiting for the announcement of the result. Uh, the TIS chair has indicated that this may be related to the scalability discussion in this working group. So the IDR chair suggested us to present it here also. So we'd like to collect some feedbacks on this document. Whether you have any uh, comments, you can just let us know. Okay. Thank you very much. So comments on the floor, we have no time restrictions now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess nobody has an opinion on this here. I mean, uh, like I stated earlier, we did send a email earlier today uh, stating what the chairs are expecting from uh, documents and other working groups that are not, uh, relevant to NRP. And I uh, think this particular draft, they've gone ahead and done that. They have added a scalability consideration section and they have brought the work. I mean, they are le let each working group know what this uh, protocol extension is supposed to do. Uh, if there are any objections, please do. Uh, I mean, there is a thread on this already. So, if, if there are any objections to this proposal, please do uh, take it to the list. With my PC working group chair hat on, do that for the PC document as well. Thank so, you. the the thread that was started was generic. I mean, we did point to the PC draft as well in that uh, thread. So yeah, the same no. comments will apply for that document as well. Correct, and Jay is co-author for both, so yeah, yeah, I just can do, that. do it. Okay, thank you. Rare thing in this working group, open mic. Does anyone have any other topics they'd like to bring up? Besides not meeting on Friday in Brisbane. <laughs> I think we've met on Friday the last two meetings, so we'll see if we continue to be punished for whatever <laughs> ill we did. Uh, I think it's like asking for two slots together. That is one of the reasons I think. We didn't say together. Oh, we didn't. <laughs> we did something wrong. That's all I know. <laughs> Maybe saying RFC XXX. 
what we did wrong. We didn't ask for three and a half hours either, so no. they just gave us extra time. Okay, this brings us to the end of uh, the tea session in this IETF. Uh, hope to see you all in Brisbane. Thank you.